but it's appropriate because okay. Bob would have proofread it. So <laughs> <laughs> it is a little bit. It's it's definitely in my sermon, so he knows he knows what's going on. <laughs> well, gather in so you can hear me. We welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. We are gathered to worship, to proclaim Christ fr crucified and risen, to remember before God, Bob Ricks, to give thanks for his life, to commend him to our merciful Redeemer, and to comfort one another in our grief. Thanks, thanks be, be to God. God. We continue with our thanksgiving for baptism. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death, and we were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Eternal God, maker of heaven and earth, who formed you from the dust of the earth, who by your breath gave us life, we glorify you. We glorify you. Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life, who suffered death for all humanity, who rose from the grave to open the way to eternal life, we praise you. We praise you. Holy Spirit, author and giver of life, the comforter of all who sorrow, our sure and confident and everlasting hope, we worship you. We worship you. I welcome you in the name of the Father, and, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. God of grace and glory, we remember before you today Bob Ricks. We thank you for giving him to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see that death has been swallowed up in the victory of Lord Jesus Christ, so that we may live in confidence and hope until by your call we are gathered to our heavenly home in the company of all of your saints through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. All of the readings today were selected by Bob himself, and these were some of his favorite readings. Our first reading today comes from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of darkest death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my life, my whole life long. The next reading comes from Philippians, the fourth chapter. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. 
Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received here and seen in me. And the God of peace will be with you always. And our gospel today comes from Matthew, the 11th chapter. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and intelligent and have revealed them to children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and, le and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of our Lord. Well, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Will you pray with me? Holy and beautiful Creator, now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be ever pleasing to you, O God. Amen. Well, I was given a list of favorite readings from Bob. And then I also sat down with the family and we talked over Bob and all the things that he loved to do and all the things that they all got to do together growing up. And so I chose three different readings and I want to tell you why. The three readings that I chose have very much to do with who I think Bob was. First, there's Psalm 23. Psalm 23, it offers us comfort as these people of God. When we reach hardship, when we reach hospitalization for six straight months, and we're finally coming towards death, God offers this path where there's no fear, there's no sickness, there's no hardship. It all just falls away. As we walk through this valley of the shadow of death, there's no longer fear, there's no longer evil. All of the provisions that we need for our life that we've been wanting this whole time are right there before us, healing us. And in that sparse, arid desert where the psalmist is writing from, there are no provisions. There's no water, there's no green grass, there's nothing cool to sit by. But in the love of God, that's where we find those green pastures, those still waters, that restoration for our soul a banquet that's placed before us for us to be able to feed in an overflowing cup, a never-ending source of life given to us from God. Thinking back on Bob's long journey that he had over six straight months in the hospital and all the times that he spent with his family over Zoom and one-on-one -on -one time, those were times of love, to offer him pure joy for him to finally to be able to find rest for his soul. That for him were those green grasses and those that still water that he could finally sit next to. And Todd told me about the times that he got to go and spend and have man time with his dad. Offer him a shave, sit down with him, finally have those final times together opening his arms wide and smiling over to Todd with pure joy. That is the green pastures and the rest for our soul. And in Philippians, in Philippians, Paul is this writer who has two very important things about him that I think Bob shares. One is that Paul is really smart. He writes letters all the time, always interacting with words and sending them all over the place. But he's also constantly being imprisoned. While he's writing his letters, he's imprisoned. He feels like he can't get away. And as I learn more and more about Bob, I learn that he is a really, really smart guy. 
Bob was always doing crossword pu puzzles and probably doing one up to the day that he died. He was always reading books. He was very musical. He could correct your grammar <laughs> with his eyes closed. He was a teacher. And on top of all of that, really good at cutting coupons. <laughs> <laughs> but Bob, like Paul, also shared in a lot of struggles. Bob may not have been imprisoned the way that Paul was, but he did spend a lot of time fighting in the hospital, fighting a really good fight, which is hard on its own, but now add in a global pandemic when you're not able to have your family right there by your side, you're not able to talk the way you want to, express your words the way you've always been able to express them. I know that that must have felt like an imprisonment for Bob. But now, as Paul is writing, he writes, Rejoice in the Lord always, I will say it again, rejoice. And let the peace of God be with you all, the God of peace. The God of peace will offer you rest. Rest for Bob. Rest for all of us. And in Matthew, Jesus says, Come to me, all of you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest in your souls. It's been a long journey. I know it's been probably longer than these last six months, since May, even a couple years ago, when he started having trouble in his throat. It's been a very long, hard fight. And right now, I think it's time to rest. Rest now. Place your burdens on the shoulder of Jesus. All you who are carrying heavy burdens, take my yoke. It is gentle and humble in heart. Rest for your souls. We come here today to welcome Bob into the kingdom of God. When we are in the presence of God, we have been made fully new again, whole again. All things that were harming our body here are now gone and we are fully ourselves. No longer hospitalized, our suffering is gone, our pain is gone. When we are no longer, though, in the presence of our family members, with the ones that we love and to share that care with them, we are then welcomed into the arms of Jesus, the one who will now become the full-time caretaker, who will offer love and arms open with joy, welcoming Bob towards him the way that Bob welcomed you all when you came into his room. In the gift of the resurrection, which we celebrate today at the graveside here of Bob Ricks, we celebrate resurrection for all. That living in a life like Jesus, we too may enter into a death and a resurrection like Jesus. Where death is only but a pause before we now enter into this new life with God. A life with God where one day we will all meet again. Amen. I'd like to invite the family to come forward to say some words. Whoever's speaking, just use this. <laughs> feel like I don't have to talk loudly now. <laughs> Can everybody hear me all right? <laughs> don't think of me as gone away. My journey's just begun. Life holds so many facets. This earth is but one. Just think of me as resting. 
from the sorrows and the tears. In a place of warmth and comfort, where there are no days and years. Think of how I must be wishing that you could know today. <laughs> how nothing but your sadness can really go away. And think of me as living in the hearts of those I touch. For nothing is ever lost, and I know I was loved so much. Baba, we know you can no longer stay with us. You fought long and hard to be with us. We know you now watch over and protect us. Although we cannot hear your voice or see your smiling face, we know deep down in our hearts that you have not left us. We are our grandpa's garden. We are his legacy. Thank you, Baba. We love you. Oh. He loved all of you. Thank you. I'm so proud of you guys. So am I. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. On behalf of my mom and all of our family, thank you for coming here, for being here today to honor and celebrate Dad's life. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Lisa Harger. I'm the eldest, as we like to say. <laughs> All right. Robert Emerson Rex, Bob to most, Baba to the grandkids, Bobby to a few, my dad. It's been a roller coaster of a year in so many ways, not just what dad was going through. But since dad was admitted to the hospital in May, we have had many good days. We all sent up a rousing cheer when we were told dad had been correcting a nurse's grammar. <laughs> no surprise to anyone who's met him. He did that a lot. The 31-year-old English teacher, 31-year English teacher, was always teaching. We all became very adept at putting ourselves down upon things <laughs> because trying to use lie and lay correctly wasn't happening. We were thrilled when we found out Dad was starting to do some crossword puzzles, even though the handwriting was shaky. He loved crossword puzzles and was remarkable at word jumbles as well. Mom and I would start them, but he'd always have to finish them, <laughs> and he could. We had a lot of laughs over Zoom, a lot of tears as well. Dad was an observer, a man of few words, but during this time, he had so much to say. Due to the trach, even though he was enunciating beautifully, not a daggone one of us could read lips. <laughs> we tried so hard. He fought so hard for so long. We were so proud of him. We did our best to keep fighting for him. We will be forever grateful that even with the DNR, Dad was resuscitated and gave us the Monday to spend all day with him. We just hang out, just hung out in the hospital room. Hospice was such a godsend. And we all got to be there and we didn't have to have our stupid masks on. <laughs> Mom, Amy, Jay, Todd, Courtney, Devin Jordan, myself, Greg, who was there until he had to go back to Wendy to pick up Caitlin from school after the bus. We're able to be together. We shared memories and collected strength just from being together. We like to think he knew we were there. As it started getting later in the day and dad's condition wasn't getting worse, we took a chance on leaving the hospice room. Got some dinner, gave mom some time to have just a little chat with him. <laughs> I can't imagine how that went. <laughs> I'm sure she told him a thing or two. Dad 
Devin and Jordan beat us back to the room and had turned the TV on just to give us a little little noise. We watched a little family feud. And then Jeopardy came on, one of Dad's favorites. He was so well read and so intelligent and amazed us all with his vast knowledge of so many topics. It was during Jeopardy that we noticed that Dad's breathing had stopped. It was very peaceful and very apropos. We figure he must have finished up a category and <laughs> that was that. Time to move on. I like to think that Dad and is now hanging out with Alex Trebek, who just passed away as well. They're working on some new Jeopardy categories and questions, and Dad's playing bridge, reading, picking raspberries and baking pies, listening to music, whistling, entertaining youngsters gone too soon with his Donald Duck imitation, planting the most colorful of flower beds, watching the birds, correcting everyone's grammar, playing the piano, singing a song to fit whatever the situation may be, such as, gray skies are gonna clear up, put on a happy face, and no longer worrying about having a coupon for half off. <laughs> Over time, we hope memories become treasures rather than blows to the heart. Dad, we know you loved us all. You were so proud of your children and your grandchildren. Thank you for being our dad and all you were to everyone here today. We love you. And gray skies are going to clear up. So put on your happy face. Now gathered here together as one, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We'll continue with the prayers of intercession. And at the end of each prayer petition, I ask for you to respond Hear our prayer. Almighty God, in your holy baptism, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion of saints in the holy body of Christ. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and peace. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to share a new life in Christ. God of mercy, Hear our prayer. Give courage and faith to all who mourn, and a sure and certain hope in your loving care, that casting all their sorrow on you, they may have strength for the day ahead. God of mercy. Grant to us who are still on our pilgrimage and who walk yet by faith, that there will be a world where the world groans with grief and pain, your Holy Spirit may lead us to bear witness to your life and light. God of mercy, help us in the midst of things we cannot understand to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Gathered together as one, let us now pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us now commend Bob Ricks to the mercy of God, our maker and our redeemer. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Bob Ricks. Acknowledge we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into your arms of mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, into the glorious company of all the saints. Amen. A reading from Job. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and that at, and at the last he will stand up on earth. Let us pray. Holy God, holy and powerful, by the death and burial of Jesus, your anointed, you have destroyed the power of death and made holy the resting place of all your people. Keep Bob Ricks, whose body we now lay to rest, in the company of all of your saints. And at the last, O God, raise him up to share with all the faithful and endless joy and peace won through the glorious resurrection of Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Listen, I will tell you a mystery. We will not all die, but we will all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last of the sound of the trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will all be changed. For this perishable body must put on imperishability, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When this perishable body puts on imperishability and this mortal body puts on immortality, then the saying that is written will be, will be true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin. The power of sin is law. But thanks be to God, who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. In sure and certain hope, the resurrection of the eternal life through Jesus our Lord, we commend to Almighty God Bob Ricks, and we commit his body to the resting place, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And now may the Lord bless him and keep him. May the Lord's face shine on him with grace and mercy, and may the Lord look upon him with favor and give him peace. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, support us all on our day long in this troubled life. Until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed, the fever of life is over. The work is done. Then in your mercy grant us safe lodging, a holy rest, a peace at last, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. Thanks be to God. This does conclude our service who's here at the cemetery for Bob. Once you've departed, his casket and grave.